Violent depictions of women being beaten, raped, and run over by cars. It's not the movies, it's video games. And now the women calling for change in this multi-billion dollar virtual industry are facing a very real backlash, including death threats. Here's my Nightline co-anchor, Juju Chang. For Anita Sarkeesian, this is the new normal. Armed escorts at public events, tracking her every move. I'm constantly aware of the fact that um, there's an enormous amount of hate directed towards me. Hate in the form yep. of bomb threats, rape threats, even death threats. On this morning, high alert at Loyola University in Chicago. It's Anita's first speaking engagement since threats of a shooting massacre forced her to cancel her last appearance. All because this media critic dared to criticize something millions of us play every day. Who plays video games? Video games. The threats making splashy headlines around the world. On shows like Melissa Harris Perry. The threat of violence? All too real. And webcasts like Democracy Now! and HuffPost Live. Violent threats for pointing out sexism in video games. Things got heated, to say the least. The harassment nice. became part of what's now known as Gamergate. What started as an online spat about the ethics of gaming journalism quickly escalated into a full-blown culture war. Women shouldn't be mere disposable objects or symbolic pawns in stories about men. And a small but hardcore group of gamers resistant to change. God ordained that it is one man, one joystick. But Gamergate doesn't just affect boys playing in a basement. The stakes are much higher than you might think. We're now spending more money on games than movies and music combined to the tune of $21 billion. And what might surprise you, there are now more adult women playing video games than there are teenage boys. We're talking about fantastical scenarios like the ones in Bioshock and epic adventures in games like Mirror's Edge. What is it exactly that's so disturbing in some video games that's making women like Anita willing to face death threats? Just when you think you hit the worst example or the most misogynist example, you find another one. Escapism is big business. More than half of us are already playing games like this one, Grand Theft Auto V. But critics say in these virtual worlds, things often take a turn toward the dark side. As a player, you can solicit a prostitute, kill her, and if that's not enough, you have the option to run her over. The sense of violence against women being used as almost background decoration, right? As texture to make an environment gritty, more real. There are plenty of games that aren't violent or sexualized, but some of the best-selling games are especially egregious. On her website, Anita dissects these games. Developers regularly utilize the brutalization of women's bodies, and especially the bodies of female prostitutes. Her goal? To bring attention to what she calls the inherent misogyny in the gaming world. I'll teach you! In Watch Dogs, she points out how women are murdered to give the hero a reason to chase down a bad guy. It gets worse and worse. It reinforces this idea of women as sexual objects, right? It reinforces this idea of women as um, playthings for their amusement. And it's this kind of talk that makes her a target. And that's when the cyber mob, right, the hate mob descended. Bombarding her with mostly anonymous tweets and messages. I will rape you when I get the chance. Hiding behind usernames and claims of free speech. I'm sitting outside your apartment with a loaded gun. Your neighbors won't hear you screaming in pain. Someone even created a grotesque game where players can beat and punch a picture of her face. Ow. But the virtual harassment turned very real when her online attackers published her social security number, her home address, and she's not the only one. They told me they were coming to kill me. They told me specifically they were going to castrate my husband. Women like Brianna Wu, an independent game developer, was even driven out of her home, all for simply tweeting her opinion. When someone posts your address online and they tell you they're going to murder your whole family, you don't really feel safe staying at that location. So far, the Gamergate harassment against Brianna and other women like her has remained online. But the FBI is taking it seriously enough that it started a file. I'm so hesitant to use the phrase terror because I think it's such a politically loaded word, but this is... It's terrorism on women in this industry. It's, it's scaring every single one of us. Why such hate? Why such anger? I think a lot of it comes from 
this idea that gaming is a male-dominated space, right? And that games are for men, by men. It's a very misogynist backlash. We are not meant to be treated with respect. Something even the casual female gamer yeah. is sadly familiar with. Watch what happens when the men in this online session of Counter-Strike learn that there's a woman playing in their midst. Are you an archaeologist? Because I have a big bone. So she's examining this is pretty lady. If I, if I subscribe, would you give me a big kiss? It's less brutal than what Anita and Brianna experienced, but it does show the ease with which offensive behavior is tossed out at women. I'd give you my skins for some skin, if you know what I mean, huh, sexy lady, huh? I'm really just here to play, like everybody else. But she's not treated like everyone else, which is at the heart of Gamergate. Media critics argue women like Stephanie need to stop being abused as players in the real world and as avatars in the virtual world. And given that women make up nearly half of this country's gamers, this isn't a feminist issue, it's just smart business. The demographics should be a huge wake-up call to executives of gaming companies because there is a huge amount of money to be made out of taking women seriously and out of demonstrating to women that you are taking them seriously. We've reached out for comment multiple times to Rockstar Games, Ubisoft, the companies behind these games, to ask about the way women are portrayed. But thus far, we've received no reply. And yet there are some signs of change in the gaming community. It's just time you just realize things from a different perspective. It's time to see how would someone else, how would a woman look at this? More and more developers like Tim Schafer are seeing the need for more women programmers and more girl-friendly games like Broken Age. I better go find that knife. I mean, once you sat down and tried to play the game with your daughter and tried to find games where she can play a character that she identifies with, you start to feel bad about not putting that option in your own games. Even Lara Croft, the famous Tomb Raider got a makeover. More clothes, less curves. I remember playing Tomb Raider Guardian of the Light and it was designed, it was uh, produced by a woman and it was like a really good game and the game did well, so we're gonna see more of that. The majority of gamers, like Chris Scott, manager of 8-Bit and Up, oh. condemn Gamergate's threats of violence. Which way is he? Which way is he? But he's not alone in believing critics like Anita exaggerate the problem. She's trying to capitalize on controversy. He also says the gaming world on the whole shouldn't be judged okay. by a few extreme examples. Uh, okay. When people complain about games like Assassin's Creed, Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty or whatever, it's similar to complaining about hip-hop and rap music today, saying, well, it's violent. That's not what hip-hop is about. You can't judge gaming by what's selling. You have to really get into the medium to understand it before you start saying, well, this is what gaming is about. Scott suggests at the end of the day, they're just they games. I know in the real world there are strong women that don't need to be saved. How do you respond to critics who say, well, this is fantasy, this is not reality, you have to lighten up? Yeah, that's a fun argument. Games have a huge impact on our society, so it's not just fantasy. It actually works to, to potentially reinforce some pretty harmful messages about women. Get away from her. For Nightline, I'm Juju Chang in San Francisco, California.